Tonight on the docket, America's third war. It isn't enough for the president, for the secretary of state, and for the war hawks in, war hawks in Washington that this country is ensnarled in two illegal wars, one in Iraq and one in Afghanistan, wars that have cost at least a trillion dollars, wars that have killed thousands of Americans and an untold number of foreign innocent civilians. They want more bloodshed. For weeks, Libyan rebels have been fighting to overthrow their brutal dictator, Colonel Gaddafi. Yet all of a sudden, the international community has decided to intervene violently, and the U.S. won't be left behind. President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton have led us into a third unethical and non-defensive conflict, this one in Libya. This is unquestionable proof that when it comes to war, there is little difference between Republicans and Democrats. Both parties' leadership are power-hungry and bloodthirsty, as there is no logical, ethical, or reasonable argument, certainly no lawful argument, for our wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Libya. But let's not forget, this action is brazenly unconstitutional. Congress did not declare war on Libya. And what you may not know is that more time was spent at the Constitutional Convention when they wrote it in 1787 debating who or what the new government would initiate rather than on war. On no other topic was discussed more than war. It is clear beyond dispute that the Constitution says only Congress can declare war. And war can only mean the governmental use of military assets for violence. Ask anyone on the ground, even Western journalists, if firing 120 Tomahawk missiles is not an act of war. Only completely perverted logic could conclude that our actions in Iraq and Afghanistan and now Libya are not acts of war that constitutionally require a formal declaration by the Congress. Here now, one of America's strongest critics of wars of opportunity, a true champion of liberty, Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman Paul, welcome to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. Well, why would the President of the United States go to the U.N. Security Council and not the Congress to get approval to, uh, to wage war in Libya? I think he philosophically believes in one world government. He wants to keep nudging us in that direction. I don't believe that he has a conviction that national sovereignty has any value. So therefore, if they can diminish the Congress, and if he diminishes the Congress, and he can get his authority from the the uh, United Nations. This enhances what he believes in. But he's not alone. You know, the leadership in both parties have been nudging in that direction for a long time. Well, why are the leadership in both parties, particularly Congressman Paul, the congressional leadership, not protecting congressional turf? Why isn't the Congress or Speaker Boehner saying, you can't do this, only we can do it. You didn't even come to us. You went to those characters on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Who's there besides you and Congressman Kucinich to protect the constitutional prerogatives of the Congress? Well, we, we have a few more, but our numbers are small. We tried to do something last week about bringing troops out of uh, Afghanistan. Our numbers are growing, but at the same time, we barely have an have a, a, a number worth anything to get us out of out of Afghanistan. Here we are getting ready to start another one. Now this is a this is a real conundrum to think of of all the effort the founders went to make the Congress the most important body that they are the most willing to give up their prerogatives and give it to the executive branch and the judicial branch and onward and onward our leaderships uh, in in the house as long as I've been there have always deferred to the executive branch and uh, it's on, on both sides either Republican or Democratic president they seem to enhance their power and you know we can complain and moan and which I do all the time about the dereliction of duty by the Congress right. but what about the American people right the American people should be saying and I think they are I think they're starting to say this and they're pre pretty annoyed by uh, Congress always capitulating to the president. You know, you, you and I disagreed with the authorization for the use of military force, which the Congress gave to President Bush in 2001, and which he used as his legal authority to uh, to enter, have the military enter Afghanistan and Iraq. But at least he went to the Congress. At least there was a debate. If President Obama had come to the Congress and there had been a debate on whether or not we should bomb Libya, what would you have said in that debate? Well, of course, I would say it's unnecessary, it's wrong, it's, uh, uh, it, it has nothing to do with national security, it has nothing to do with the defense of this country. 
and that we shouldn't do it. It would be very costly, life and limb and dollars and everything else. And that there will be so many unintended consequences. And just think how neat it was going to be in Iraq. You know, a short war and oil would pay all the bills. And here we are eight years later. There's no stable government there in Afghanistan. Ten years. It just goes on and on. Do, do you so, think, uh, we, we do you think, Congressman Paul, that President Obama harbors some of the same views of President Bush, and that is uh, nation building, destroying a nation and then rebuilding it, and what the presidents believe is the Western image and likeness in, in the Middle East, an area that has never had democracy and doesn't understand the rule of law and can't accept the concept of individual or natural rights? Are they trying to do the impossible? Yeah. Yeah, they are, and they've been doing it for a long time, but I believe it started really with Wilson, you know, uh, making the world safe for democracy, this motivation to sell it to the people. But, you, you know, a lot of people agree with it, and they're motivated with that, and I don't know the deep motivations of Bush or Obama, but I know the people tend to believe that, but I think there are more, there's more to do with it than just that, because I think that might be their cover. It may be that oil is an important issue here, uh, you know, uh, we we didn't go to Rwanda for humanitarian right. reasons, so right. I'm not I'm not too sure that oil might be the the real clincher here and the reason the, we're before there. Before I let you go, what's next? I mean, is there going to be a debate on the floor of the Congress? Congressman Kucinich wants the president, who was a member of the same party, uh, to be impeached. So there's going to be something happening. What do you see happening? Will members of Congress just look the other way, or will something happen when you all get back to D.C.? No, I, I don't expect a whole lot to happen because the leadership, uh, I, I see some of the Democrats who were really very, very tough on George Bush when he was starting his war in Iraq. But now they're all for, you know, Obama's war because they got permission properly from the United Nations. You know, that just seems to clinch some. Of them. Not Dennis Kucinich. He knows better and he will be a strong opponent. But unfortunately, our coalition is not big enough to either stop the wars or prevent them from starting new wars. But I am still hopeful that the American people will wake up and join us. But monetarily, we won't be able to afford it. That's what will finally end all this, is right. finally when we're flat out broke. Right. Congressman Paul, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Congressman Ron Paul is not...